Please open your Bibles to three portions of Scripture, Matthew chapter 5, Luke chapter 4, and Ephesians chapter 3. Let's see if your iPhone can open simultaneously to all three of those. And then for the, for the sake of illustration, I want to I demonstrate something this morning because I want to go after spiritual things. And my wife said, don't get too discouraged. It's quite deep what you are preaching through. So I want to make it practical and simple on the, on the front end so that hopefully you've got something to reference. So Vasim, would you please come help me real quick? Because Arthur's going to be an innocent bystander. Sir, I don't know your name, I think. Is it the first time that you're at the base? Been here before? Would you please come help me? Thank you. And then there's a young, young gentleman with a blue top. I don't know if you're a visitor this morning, sir. Are you visiting? Not. Oh, it's okay, lekker. I'm standing above my eyes, please, man. But actually, sir, you are way too big for what I need you for. There's too much muscle on you already. <laughs> so, so, so let's stand this side. Let's just illustrate something. You've seen this before. Here he comes, please. So, so I want to introduce you. Stand here, he comes in the middle, please. What is your name? Monrico. Monrico. Come stand here in the middle, please, man. Awesome. I want to introduce you to your spirit. I want to introduce you to your soul. <laughs> and here's the body. <laughs> so, so I want to talk about this one this morning. I want to talk about this part of you this morning, the spiritual part of you this morning. I could go on an estimate, bro. You used to feel muscles of your skull. I can't help you, but it's good. Let's start here. So, so what you are seeing at the moment is the benefit of a cross-section of who you are. Spirit, soul, body. Okay? So, Vasim, would you stand on the front at this point? Come stand here after the I want to talk to you about the part of you that's hidden to the world. You see this strapping fellow the whole time. Quite impressive. Broad shoulders, strong back. I don't know what the grip looks like, but we won't go there. <laughs> the soul, if you look nicely, you see him every now and then. The spirit very seldomly is seen. Yet it's within our spirits that so much of the gospel is relevant for. So let's see this thing. We're going to pray broken telephone. Are you guys all right with that? I'm going to whisper something in your ear. I want you to give that instruction to your soul, and then the soul must give an instruction to your body. Are you all right? Is there an instruction that you have to pass on? Did you pass it on? Well, there's something wrong here. Because there's an action that was instructed to spirit, soul is there, but body is like half asleep. Did you get an instruction? You want to give it again? Whisper in his ear. You don't have to. Uh, so...
another again? Just plays next to one another. I want to talk to you this morning about spirit empowerment. I want to talk to you about, about the reality of what's happening in here. The reality is most of our spirits is not as strong as this young man. How do you become strong in spirit? You need the Holy Spirit to come and become very close to you, to come and become the one that you can realize and recognize. I was hoping it was a little bit shorter, but at least you can still see me towering over him. That's the function that the Holy Spirit does to our spirit. And when I whisper into his ear, into the spirit, the soul gets the benefit and the body takes action. Does that make sense? But the challenge is if our spirits are poor. There's a young boy to your right, sir. Would you send him up the stage real quick? Yes, that young man, right, come help me real quick. I want to, yes, come. You can preek for ochend, broer. So you can go and sit. You've helped us incredibly. The reality is most of our spirits look like this. We are focused on Wasim, the big machine. Because the world focuses here. The soul every now and then throws a tantrum, but the reality of what happens in here is what this morning's preach is all about. I want to talk to you about spirit empowerment. How do you empower your spirit to become like that strong young man? How do you get your spirit so empowered that when he instructs your soul, your soul listens? How do you help your, your spirit and soul to direct the actions of your body, especially the rebellious actions of your body, when they don't want to do, when, they, when you tell them to raise their right hands, and they don't want to do it? Are you okay? Thanks, guys. You can go and sit. Bless you. Keep on gymming, so I like the strength that's in your body. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to start there. It's the Beatitudes. I want us to read verse 3. It said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's beautiful. It's simple, straightforward. Luke chapter 4, listen to what Jesus says as he announces his ministry. The first preach he ever preached. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. As he picked up the scroll in the temple and then he says this. He says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Seems like Jesus is quite serious about this poverty of your spirit. And then let's find ourselves in Ephesians chapter 3 and pick up what Paul makes around this poverty of, of spirit and, and how we can enrich our spirits. Ephesians chapter 3. I want you to, to see this verse. Underline that in your iPhone or in your iPad if you can. And the line in your Bible, if you please. Verse 16. Sorry, I've got it wrong. Verse 14. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom this whole family in heaven and earth derives its name. I pray that out of His glorious riches, underline that, please, out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power. I want you to see that verse, and that's the main thought. But let's read from verse 10 together in Ephesians 3. It says, God's intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly realms, according to His eternal purpose, which He accomplished in Christ, Jesus our Lord. In Him, and through faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of our sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, 
from whom this whole family in heaven on earth derives its name. I pray that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So, Father, I thank you that we can humble ourselves before you this morning. Thank you that Paul gives us an example of how to pray so that we will have the benefit of of spirit power, Holy Spirit power. Father, this morning I ask that you would demonstrate and activate your word, that we will not just hear your truth. But I thank you for the grace this morning to unlock it, to activate it, and to enjoy the reality of your Holy Spirit's power. We just bless you, and we just honor you. Amen. If you're visiting us this morning, we're preaching through a series called Serving the Purposes of God. I want to encourage you to go into the YouTube channel and just look at some of those preachers. I believe there's truth that the body of Christ needs to hear again. So this morning, we're continuing our series, and we're looking very specifically at if we're going to serve the purposes of God, we have to serve God's purposes with His power. And it's important for us as believers to know how to access that power, how to enjoy that power, and how to release that power. And so it starts off in Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus puts down a blessing, but the blessing has a condition. I don't know if you saw that. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Did you hear the condition in there? You have to recognize that your spiritual condition is one of poverty. If you can recognize your current spiritual position, then there's great news for you. At the moment you recognize it, There's a huge promise that you can have and enjoy the benefits of the kingdom of heaven, all of the riches of heaven, all of the power of heaven, all of the insights of heaven, all of heaven can be made available to you. It's just got one condition. You have to recognize that you are poor in spirit. You have to recognize that you are powerless in spirit. You have to recognize that your spirit is longing. Your spirit is is small and it needs some development under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I love Jesus. He's an incredible teacher. I love how he takes natural things to explain massive, deep spiritual realities. He talks about something that all of us can relate with. He talks about money. He talks about poverty. Now, now in my little journey of 47 years in the world, I learned a couple of things about money. I wouldn't say that I'm an expert, but I've learned a couple of things. The first thing I learned is that I was born poor. I was born into a poor family. Not because we wanted to be poor. I mean, my dad was hardworking. But it happens to be on the farm that we had a seven-year drought and there was not money for any luxuries. So I grew up with Millipub, not just because I enjoyed it, luckily I did, and it fed a nice frame, but often that was the only option available. Wasn't my choice, wasn't my liking, I just got born into a family that was battling financially. We were poor. I remember the embarrassment, age 10, when my dad bought his first Audi 100. It was a white one. I think in those days they only were white. I don't think there were other colors. We felt 
like we've arrived. Bearing in mind, it wasn't a new Audi 100. It was a second-hand Audi 100. Now, now I need to define second-hand for you a little bit more. Second-hand is when it's not brand new. You're buying it from someone that has been used. You all right? But if it has changed hands three times, four times, five times, six times, eight times, ten times, it is still considered second-hand. So please do not think it was the first exchange second-hand. It was more like the tenth exchange second-hand, Audi 100. You okay? In other words, there was no vehicle plan, no motor plan involved anymore. If it breaks, you fix it for your own account. So Vrachis, on one day, heading to go and play a, a final for the, for the league, age 10 rugby final, the service plan on the Audi 100 ran out. It broke down and we were stuck. I'm like, oh, it means I'm not going to play the game and I'm not going to. Luckily, we were traveling in convoy and someone gave us a lift to the game. Needless to say, we lost the game. Poverty is a horrible thing. Then one kind man offered us his car. I thought, oh my goodness, we, now we're going to get upgraded. Only to get a Ford Cortina, all shape. It was a capoon color. Pampoon on the one side and car on the other side. It had an exhaust with so many holes in it that you heard us before you saw us. Can you imagine going to church on a Sunday morning? You silence the worship. You silence the preacher. Because the Labiskachnis is arriving at church. And I tell you, it ain't fun to be born into poverty. That's true for your spirit as well. Because of decisions that Adam and Eve had made, they caused you, the moment you get born into this physical world, it caused you to be born poor in the things of the Spirit. Dead poor. That poverty is termed death. You are dead to God. You're so poor, you don't have anything, you are dead to God. And unless you recognize I'm dead to him, I cannot hear him, I cannot experience him because I don't recognize who Jesus is for me, there's no hope that you'll ever enjoy the riches of the kingdom of heaven designed for your spirit. I've had to learn that some of us are born poor, some of us can become poor. In the natural. I mean, I, I, I know what it feels like. I, had to, I used to have a nice rugby income. It's an amazing feeling when you drive a Discovery and the Mercs and all those wonderful things. And then you make one decision. You say, I'm going to follow the Lord. And then you say, bye-bye to all those nice luxuries. I know what it feels like to become poor. I sat with my wife and thinking, what the heck are we busy doing? I'm going to raise you as a beggar. How, how are we going to live? I wonder how many of you have made poor investment decisions that has caused you to become poor financially. Anyone? How many of you chose the wrong partners to partner with? And it cost you a couple ting, more than you would want to recognize this morning to your wife. I told you so, Hattie. Abby, I told you you mustn't do that. I was like, I know what I'm doing. Now, don't raise your hand now. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. <laughs> through certain decisions, through certain associations, through certain partnerships, and here's the thing, just through poor stewarding of your finances, you can become poor. I'm not talking about not having money. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about Losing, spending your money in a way that puts you in poverty. You know that that's an example of what it looks like in your spirit. 
You can be born again in one moment because you trust in Jesus. You can have all the riches of heaven poured into your soul. You're in one moment, you become alive to God, but you can start to live your life in such a way that your spirit becomes so poor because of the bad choices, the bad partnerships, and the lack of stewarding of your spiritual life. That's not called death, that's called your flesh. You're spiritually dead to God, your spirit is so poor you are dead. But if you have something of God, when you get born again, His life is inside of you, you can through lack of stewarding, you can become poor. It's quite easy in ministry to get there, because you start to give more than what you receive. That's a recipe for financial disaster, is it not? If you're, if you're spending more than what you're getting in, am I right? Same spiritually. Some of you can become poor because you've so given out, but you've never learned how to receive from the Lord spiritually. You become poor. Church starts to feel like a program. Serving Jesus becomes like a duty. When actually, if we know how to be spirit empowered, we just, the more we give, the more we get. The more we release, the more we receive. Then I had to learn that, that some believers, some people that have money, let's keep, before we get spiritual, let's keep it in the natural. Some men know how to behave poor. Even when they load it, they look at the way they dress. Can I give you, can I help you? Meanwhile, he's loaded. He's behaving poor. He's one of those guys with the short arms and the deep pockets, you know, never gets to his money. I've had to realize, like it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. Some of us, as sons and daughters of God, we have been made rich, but we behave poor. Just give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, but I'm not going to give anything away. I'll get a nice preach, I'll get lack of worship, but this thing is all about me. It's just how can I have more? But please don't ask me to release a single thing. Please don't ask me to make my gifts and talents available to the body. Do you not know that Jesus loves me, he saves me, and he expects me just to keep all the blessings for myself? No, that's prosperity gospel. That's not the gospel. The biggest problem with prosperity gospel has got the church to behave poor. You get upset when the blessing doesn't land. Instead of just realizing you are the blessing, just release it. Here's the thing about spiritual empowerment. If you want the blessing of spiritual empowerment this morning, how many of us want that? To be spirit empowered this morning, Holy Spirit empowered this morning. If you want to receive that blessing this morning, you have to be honest. About where you're at. You have to be honest to say, you know what, I don't know who Jesus is. Can someone please introduce me? Because in that moment, as you are honest with Jesus, the kingdom of heaven will become yours. Why? Because the life of God will be imparted into your spirit simply because you've trusted Jesus to save you. If you've become poor, you think back, how do you recognize that you're spiritually poor? When you sit and talk with people, your stories is months old, is years old. Remember when we used to be on fire for the Lord? You've become spiritually poor. If your stories is more than, how do I say this, weeks old, and you become poor, you're slowly starting to become poor in your spirit. Our testimony should be fresh like this morning, fresh like yesterday. Why? Because we have received and now we can give. Remember the early days of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Anyone that would st stand still for two seconds were in trouble. Because I'm going to question them about the salvation and if they're happy, then I'm going to baptize them in tongues. Not me, but the Holy Spirit, but I'm going for these targets. 
if that's not you at the moment, you've become poor spiritually. But if you are honest this morning, if you'll be honest this morning with heaven, if you'll be honest with Jesus this morning, saying, Lord, I realize, oh my goodness, I am behaving poor. I, I've become poor. I need to be empowered afresh. I've got good news for you. The kingdom of heaven belongs to you. And then I love how Jesus in Luke chapter 4 he helps us to understand this even more. He helps us to understand that if I can recognize who He is, if I can recognize what He has done, then that's the entry point. It's the entry point into the riches of a spiritual life, the empowerment of a spiritual life that, that no man can keep away from you or comprehend. He says, guys, I come with good news. The good news is for who? For the poor. Now, I believe he's talking poor financially there, but he's also talking about the poor in spirit. So let's just for a moment hang with what Jesus is saying. He says, I've come, I've got good news. The good news is for the poor. You know what makes the gospel good news? Is you do not need money to be significant in the kingdom of God. What makes the gospel good news is you don't need status to be someone in the kingdom of God. In the world, if you want to make it, you better have a proper bank balance. Have you discovered that? If you don't have a lot of money, people's like, I don't know if I want to hang out with you. Jesus says, no, 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 no. If you just have faith, all of heaven will hang out with you. It's good news. It's good news to the poor. If you are dirt poor this morning with money, I've got amazing news for you. You don't need money to be significant in the kingdom of God. You just need faith. If you're looking at the status of others and you think yesterday, I'd also like an extra car. I'd also like a home at the sea. i also like those things be because I want to be successful. I've got good news for you this morning. The good news of the gospel says if you will just obey the king, he'll make you successful in the kingdom. The good news of the gospel. Jesus could walk into a meeting like this. He opens the scroll to Isaiah, and here's the shocking thing. He says, hey, guys, just look at me. You see this body anointed by the Spirit. Got good news for you. I can't think of a better preach for a newly starting preacher. I've got good news for you, all those who are poor. Got good news for you. And if you've seen, the majority of the world is dirt poor. I don't know if you've seen, Jesus barely stopped to feed the whole poverty of the world. He said, No, 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 I come for much bigger things. I want to get people spiritually rich, not just financially rich. How much of the church is chasing the financial riches when they're missing the spiritual riches that we can access in Christ? It's an amazing thing. If I'm dead honest with you, the reason you're chasing the money is because you want to be independent of God. Now I can sort out my life. I can do what I want. I can go when I want. I can go where I want. Good news for you this morning. This message is fresh. Because before you this morning stands another man that has been anointed by the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He's anointed me to give good news to the poor this morning. Now, I'm sorry the messenger doesn't look like the messenger you had in mind. But if you can receive the messenger and if you can hear the message, you will be made rich this morning in the most ridiculous of ways. Gets me dancing.
If you can hear this message that Jesus says, I want to make you spiritually rich. I want to empower you spiritually till you are so filthy rich, you would not know what to do with all of your riches. Here's the good thing. When you're spiritually rich, you are rich for eternity. How do we receive this incredible opportunity? How do we, how do we receive it? It's very easy to receive this blessing that Jesus offers you. You want to be blessed spiritually. If you want to be spirit empowered, there's only one condition. The blessing is conditional to your desperation levels. How desperate are you this morning for Jesus? How desperate are you saying, oh my Lord Jesus, I want to be empowered by your spirit more than anything that this world can offer me. I want to be empowered by your spirit. I need my spirit to be rich. If you come desperately this morning, I've got good news for you. I've got good news for you. He'll make you rich in a moment. The lotto has got nothing on Jesus. I mean, who's playing lotto amongst us? Can I be honest? What's the lotto at the moment? Anyone that's up to date? Let me ask a different way. Who's ever had all of your debts in one moment paid off? There's one. Two. Who's had house bonds? Wiped out. Anyone? Who would like your debt to be wiped out in a moment? <laughs> Do you hear what Jesus is offering you? Say, so forget about the natural stuff. Forget about all this stuff. Come to me. In one moment, you'll win the spiritual lotto. In one moment, all your spiritual debt will be paid off and you'll be made rich in every way. The gospel is good news. So how do we receive it? Thank you for asking a great question. Ephesians chapter 3. How do we receive it? Verse 12 says we need to know how to approach God. Ephesians 3.12 says, how do we approach Him? It says, in Him. Who's the Him? In Christ, Jesus our Lord. In Christ Jesus our Lord, and through faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. It's all about how you approach this morning. All about how you approach. Ask any pilot if he wants to land. It's all about your approach. If you line yourself up with a landing strip, you're going to have a good landing. You've got a good chance of having a successful landing. Paul says if you want to have Holy Spirit empowerment this morning, if you want to be made rich, it's all about how you approach. Now, here's what makes our gospel so powerful. If you believe in Jesus, Jesus allows you to approach God directly by yourself. No other religion has that. Every other religion says, no, speak to us, we'll speak to him. Ancestor worship amongst my black brothers. That's why the ancestors is worshipped. Because you believe they'll do a better word for you with God than what you can do for yourself. But when you realize that the gospel says because you approach through Jesus, you've got access to God as a father yourself. 
then things start to shift. So do we worship Jesus? Of course we do. But we realize we don't stop at Jesus. We realize that when we approach in the name of Jesus, in the work of Jesus, in the authority of Jesus, we come to God our Father by ourselves. When my boy was younger, he used to approach me through my wife. Because he was reckoning maybe mom has got a bit more leverage with dad than I. Clever young man. 10 out of 10 for genuity, ingenuity. But then he realized as he grew up, you know what? I don't have to be afraid of him. He's always acting in my best interest, even if I say no. He learned that. So now he's not sidelining, coming through my wife to me. He's just saying, hey, Dad, can we sit and talk, please? How do you approach God, your Father? Are you coming to Jesus and stopping there? Or are you saying, Jesus, because of your lordship over my life, because of your saving of my spirit, because of your anointing on your life that dealt with sin completely, I approach God as my Father. I come to Him, through Him, to God my Father by faith. Jesus died to give you a relationship with God as your father. I know we celebrate Mother's Day today. But if your earthly father was a particular idiot, then your heavenly father is going to be viewed through your same lenses. You have to allow Jesus to change your lenses. You have to approach through Jesus to God as your Father. Why? Because He's loaded. He is gloriously rich. You know, I've never heard that said about Bill Gates. I've never heard it said about the top 10 wealthy people in the world. And I mean, they got trillions or billions. I don't know. My boy will be able to tell me with that. Some of you might know. How many know how strong Bill Gates is at the moment? Anyone? Okay, it's a lot. I've never heard it said about any man on the earth that he's gloriously rich. But your heavenly father is gloriously rich with power, is gloriously rich with information, is gloriously rich with wisdom, is gloriously rich with understanding, is gloriously rich with secrets, is gloriously rich with faith, is gloriously rich with power. Why don't you just go to him? Why don't you just go to him and ask his spirit to whisper into your spirit the strategy for your business? Why don't you just go to him and ask him to whisper by his spirit into your spirit the purpose for your life? I want to ask you this deep theological question, easy answer. Is there anything that God the Father will deny Jesus his son. Who says maybe? Please. Who says no? About 50% of us. The rest of you, let me preach to get you awake. Stay with me. After everything that Jesus did, he left the comforts of heaven, he became a man anointed by the Spirit. For 33 and a half years, he lived on the earth. Why? Because it was his idea? No, because it was his father's idea. The last three and a half years, he ministered. He didn't have a job. He didn't look for an income. He just said, this is what my father wants. I'm going to be ministering now. The last bit of those three and a half years ended in pain. It ended with Jesus being looked, frowned upon. God the Father looking away. Jesus says, Father, why have you left me? Was that Jesus' idea? Whose idea was it? God the Father. After being dead and raised to life, do you think there's anything 
that Jesus will ask the Father, that the Father will say, my boy, let's just think about this a little bit. Help me? This side seems to say, no, this side I'm a little bit more concerned about. Is there anything that God the Father will deny the Lord Jesus Christ after His perfect life and sacrifice if the Son would ask the Father? Nothing. So what do you think will happen when you approach Him with that name? What do you think will happen when you approach God your Father with the, with the same understanding of authority that His Son won on your behalf? What will God the Father say to your request? Some of you say, hmm. I don't know, maybe, you know, you look at my, what I did yesterday and this morning. I don't know if you will. Well, that's why you're not coming in your name. That's why you're not coming with your authority. That's why you're not coming with your credibility. That's why you're not coming with your ability. You're coming, approaching on the ability of the Lord Jesus Christ, who's done everything to access your Father. And the Father will deny Jesus Christ the Lord nothing that he asks. Now somebody's like, yes, you make it easy, Yannis. Now I'm going to ask for that Ferrari. <laughs> Been there? Had preachers like that, I'm sure. Can the Lord give you a Ferrari if he wants? Of course. He's gloriously rich. But watch out that you do not miss the point. Watch out that you're not looking to bless the outward man. While the inner man is so verkrimped and sick. And there's no reality of God within your spirit. You ask God, your Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To empower your spirit. What do you think he will answer? Come now, help me. It's not a rhetorical question. You're going to say, well, Yanis, let's think about that one, you know. Or if you approach in his name, will he say, because you come on behalf, because you come with the authority, when you come in alignment with what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you, yes and amen. There you go. You need to know how to approach. And then we need to know how to ask. What are you asking? You're not asking for the Lamborghini. Can he give it to you? Can he unlock it to you? Yes. He's God. If he wants to make you filthy rich financially, he can do that. Just watch out that you don't start worshiping your finances instead of neglecting your faith. So how do you ask when you approach him? How do you ask that you cannot be denied? It's an important question. There's a certain way when my wife approached me a certain way and she asked me, it's like, I cannot deny you. Some of the guys are smiling. They know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> what does Paul ask? Listen to how he asks. He says in verse 16, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, in your spirit, in that hidden away part of you. That he would strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. So how do you ask? You come, you approach in the name of Jesus, and you ask your Father, Father, I recognize this morning that I'm spiritually particularly weak this morning. I recognize I'm spiritually quite powerless this morning. I feel so discouraged. But I come and I ask, Father, would you use your power, that same power that raised Jesus to life, would you release that power into my spirit by the Holy Spirit? 
that I can be strengthened. In a moment, your spirit grows muscles. In a moment, the Holy Spirit comes and He ministers to your spirit and all of the riches of God gets deposited into your spirit. It's like, yes, what was that? Something is different here. You need wisdom? He'll impart it to your spirit. You need power? He'll empower it to your spirit. You need hope? He'll empower it to your spirit. I want you to see this. Do you know why we get to battle in the Lord? Do you know why we start battling with the Lord? It's because we don't really grasp that He loves us so much. That's why you start to battle. When circumstance comes, it comes against you, it's like, I think the Lord is angry with me. God is angry with me. The reason you cannot be a radical witness for the Lord is because you think, I don't know at what point He's going to take His love from me. I don't feel particularly loved. I want you to see how Paul goes about this. He says, listen, the love of God is not something that is rationalized or that's logically worked out. The love of God is the result of a power encounter with His Spirit into your spirit. Then you start to know, oh, wow, I am really loved. Do you know why the church is powerless? Do you know why believers are powerless? We're not convinced that God has got us. He loves us. How do you get that love? Paul says it's very simple. You have to approach and you have to ask specifically for stuff to happen in your spirit. And when your spirit is made rich, sir, the most amazing thing happens to your soul. Your heart says Christ lives in here. The carelessness falls away. The compromise falls away. The condemnation falls away and only Christ starts to stay within your heart. And now you start to go into the realm of, oh, wow, how much has he loved me? How much does he love me now? He says the, the length of the love of Christ. Think about this. He's long-suffering. He loves you so much, he's not going to give up on you. He's pursuing you. doesn't matter how long it takes. He's pursuing you. And he's saying, now come back to the Father. He says, the width of his great love. Jesus loves you so much that he went over the divide of your sin and death and worldliness. He got a hold of you and he got a hold of God the Father. He says, I love them so much. The width of my love will get them to be united, never to be departed from one another again. The depth of his great love. That he would go down into hell to be punished for your sin. To demonstrate to you how much he loves you. The height of that great love. That he would go into the highest heavens to sit at the right hand of God the Father to say, you are seated with me. That's how much I love you. How do you grasp that one power encounter? Where the resurrection power of our Father impacts your spirit through the Holy Spirit. One power encounter. Then Paul says you need to know how to receive this. Approach, ask, receive. Good news, sir. It's good news. Many believers do not know how to receive. Listen to how Paul puts this. He says it's through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, not through Jesus, it's through the Holy Spirit into your spirit. Get the difference? The Holy Spirit is the one of the Godhead 
that's active, that's working, that's, that's administrating this reality to your spirit. He's the one that teaches you about this nature of God that's living inside of you. He's the one that encourages you. He's the one that empowers you. He's the one that helps you. How does he help you? When you ask, you need to know how to receive. So where, how, can I help us? How do you receive? The Bible says out of your belly, streams of living water will flow. So where do you look to receive? Not in your head, but in the innermost being in the area of your belly. Now I know some guys have got a six pack still. Some guys you've got a cooler bag. Luckily, the Holy Spirit makes no difference. But when you ask Him, you can expect to receive where? From in here. From within the innermost of your belly. Streams of living waters will start to flow. So I know what it feels like. When I approach my Father and say, Father, I come in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that you would strengthen my spirit with the power of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen my spirit. I cannot control it. What happens is the power of the Holy Spirit gets released to my spirit. It's bigger than my body. My body's like, what the heck is that? It's the lightning bolt from heaven that raised Jesus to life, that he's just opened up a little bit into my spirit. What about you? How would you like to receive? What can you expect when you receive? He says in verse 20, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Hey, what can you expect to receive? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but I can just tell you it will be immeasurably more than what you asked. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know exactly. For some, it might look like you plugged into the 220 volt. It's like, uh, happy. Some of you, you just get the peace of the Lord over you. Some of you might start laughing as the joy of the Lord starts to flow out of you. Some of you will grab your pen because the strategy that the Lord has given you is going to revolutionize the earth with your business. Why don't we just approach Him? Why don't we just ask Him? Why don't we just receive? You okay? How do you get this blessing? How do you get this blessing? You just need to learn to be dependent on Him. By myself, I can do no good thing. Father, if you don't empower me, I've got no chance. Father, if you don't do something significant within my spirit, I'll be just trying to find my way falling around. But if you can come this morning and if you can be honest about where you're at, if you can come this morning because you are desperate for God, and if you can come this morning because you depend on Him, do you think there's any of His riches He will keep from you? you mind to stand with me? I'll ask the team to help us the singing of songs. One of the biggest tools that the Lord has given us as His church is the ability to speak in tongues. So how do I receive? Can I take you through my process? Hopefully it'll help you because then you're going to be able to practice with me. You comfortable that way? The front row seem to be for the benefit of the back. Let me help you. 
This is how I do it. I come to Jesus. I start to praise Him. I thank Him that He's so faithful, so able, so willing. And then when I'm in that place of praise, I come and I say, I thank you, Father, that I can approach you now in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. He's not yours. He's mine. He's not my grandfather's. He's mine. I come, I approach you in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. The one that cannot be denied. And I ask you, Father, I ask you to to strengthen me with your resurrection power, your dynamite power within my spirit. Oy, Jesus. I'm not even intending to have it happen, and it happens. And then, I lift my hands and I just pray in tongues. What am I doing? I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to impart. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to deposit. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to empower my spirit. You happy to try? Can we ask him? Can we receive from him? You okay? So close your eyes and lift your hands with me if you don't mind. Just where you at start to praise Jesus. Just praise him. Thank him that he's able to do it this morning. Thank him, thank him that he's faithful to do this for you this morning. I don't want to, I want to ask you, don't think it. Please do not think it. Otherwise, you make it an intellectual exercise. Make it a faith exercise. Speak the words. Speak the praise of Jesus. Speak it. Declare it from your lips. Speak that he's able. Speak that he's faithful. Speak that he's so willing. Then let's approach God as our Father. Why are we confident? Why do we come freely? Because of the Lord Jesus Christ through whom we approach by faith. So Father, we come this morning with our hands held high. We approach you with freedom and confidence through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There you go. There's his presence. There's his presence. Bless you. Oh, Father, we honor you this morning. Oh, we honor you this morning. Now let's ask him. Father, we ask you to empower us this morning, to strengthen us with that same resurrection power through your Holy Spirit into our human spirits. Oh, empower us. That we could be rooted in love. That Christ can live in our hearts by faith. That's it. Now just receive. If you've done the asking, just receive now. If you're comfortable to pray in tongues, just continue praying in tongues for a little bit. Allow the Holy Spirit to impart. Allow the Holy Spirit to impart power, wisdom, courage, the life of God. Jesus, give us understanding. Give us your mind, Father. Give us your mind, Father. Give us the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Give us the secret things. Give us discernment that we can see things the way you see them, Father. Bless you this morning, Father. Oh, we receive. We receive peace this morning. We ask you for peace and joy that transcends all understanding, that we would know this love, that we would know how much you love us. Just release, Lord. Thank you that heaviness is lifted off of people. The residue of depression is lifted off of people. We thank you this morning that you touch us from the inside out. Jesus. Oh, we bless you. We depend on you this morning, Father. If you don't do it, We have got nothing as a backup. We bless you. We praise you.